This Week at NASA. The three new members of the Expedition 27 crew are busy making the International Space Station their new home for the next five months. Flight engineers Alexander Samakutiev, Andrei Borzhenko, and Ron Garin arrived at the station in their Soyuz spacecraft following a successful journey from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The craft, dubbed the Gagarin for Yuri Gagarin, who became the first human in space 50 years ago this week, docked to the Poist module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment. The trio joined Expedition 27 commander Dmitry Kondratiev and flight engineers Katie Coleman and Paolo Nespoli. The six will continue research into the effects of microgravity on the human body, biology, physics, and materials. Now that we have the major construction done, we are in the utilization phase of the space station. So we are doing on the space station now what it was designed to do, and that's cutting edge science, cutting edge research, and, and opening up you know, doors to, uh, to discovery. NASA managers will hold a flight readiness review on Tuesday, April 19th, to assess the team's ability to support launch of Space Shuttle Endeavour on STS-134. Barring unforeseen issues, the FRR is expected to conclude with the selection of an official launch date for the mission. Endeavour's liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center is targeted for April 29th at 3.47 p.m. Eastern. The STS-134 crew will have among its members astronaut Mike Fink, who returns to the International Space Station after living there for a year's time on two previous missions. A veteran of two Soyuz flights, this will be the Pittsburgh native's first flight on a shuttle. My job on the, on the mission is to be uh, first and foremost MS-1. What does MS-1 mean? Mission specialist number one. I sit up on the flight deck in the cockpit and help uh, with launching and landing of this complex aerospace vehicle. It's really amazing what the sh shuttle can do. So I like to think that some of the skills that I learned in flying as a flight engineer in the Soyuz, I'm helping uh, my shuttle friends uh, work on. For a suit that you'd have, want to go. NASA headquarters welcomed students from Maryland School for the Blind in Baltimore to Disability Mentoring Day. The students, ages 12 to 15, rotated through several stations, exploring and learning through touch about the Space Shuttle, the Hubble Space Telescope, the Mars Rovers, and other NASA programs. They also met and chatted with NASA scientists and engineers. The annual event encourages students to strive for success and consider careers in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. Inside the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's spacecraft assembly facility, news media donned special clean room garments for a close-up look at NASA's next Mars rover, Curiosity. You know, we're looking to see if there is any evidence that there was ever life there, maybe there still is. Um, so we don't want to take something to Mars with us and then discover something, only to realize that it didn't actually come from Mars, we brought it with us. So we're trying to keep everything as clean as we, as we possibly can. This is the most assembled the press has ever seen this vehicle. It's got the arm, the remote sensing mask, the mobility system, this is a completely assembled Mars rover. The rover recently completed tests under simulated space and Mars surface environmental conditions. The mission spacecraft, including the rover and other components, will be shipped to the Kennedy Space Center in May and June. Launch of the Mars Science Laboratory and Curiosity is scheduled between November 25th and December 18th, with a landing on the Red Planet in 2012. The mission will investigate whether one of Mars' most intriguing areas as conditions that are or have been favorable for microbial life to exist. I know many were deeply and personally affected by the news and the tr of the tragic shooting in Tucson a couple months ago. Goddard Space Flight Center employees joined with the American Red Cross to kick off the Gabrielle Giffords Honorary Save a Life campaign. The quick action by a member of her staff played an enormously important role in saving her life. We never know when we might be called on to react in a similar manner. Part of a nationwide effort that encompassed a hundred locations around the country, the event included Red Cross training for basic hands-only CPR and demonstrations on how to treat shock and dress wounds. The lesson of Tucson is simple. We can all make a difference 
and saving other people's lives. Congresswoman Giffords continues to recover from a serious gunshot wound suffered in January in Tucson. Many have said her continued recovery is due in no small part to the life-saving efforts implemented immediately following the incident. Giffords is married to STS-134 Commander Mark Kelly. And now, centerpieces. More than 800 students in College Station, Texas, celebrated the end of six weeks of training as part of Mission X, Train Like an Astronaut. As part of the activities, the students heard from astronauts Rick Linehan and Leland Melvin, who is now NASA's Associate Administrator for Education. Mission X involved almost 4,000 students in 25 cities worldwide and promoted healthy nutrition and fitness. Linehan and Melvin talked with the students about the importance of staying healthy, studying hard and working in teams, and of course, listening to your teachers. They also talked about what made them want to become astronauts and what it's like to fly in space. Get ready. Get set. Go. Nearly 70 high school and college teams throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, Canada, Germany, India, and Russia descended on the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, April 1st and 2nd for the 18th annual NASA Great Moon Buggy Race. The event, hosted by the Marshall Space Flight Center, encourages young people to reach for new heights in science, technology, engineering, and math, and pursue careers in technical fields that will benefit NASA, the nation, and all humankind. Students are challenged to build and race lightweight, human-powered buggies, demonstrating the same innovation and can-do spirit that put the first Apollo-era lunar rover on the moon four decades ago. We all had our own ideas and we all thought we knew what would work best and we tried to incorporate it all together, but in the end, after testing it, we had some minor flaws, like the back axle bent and we had to go back and fix it, so we had a few minor bumps that we had to go over through, but overall it worked pretty well. Participation in the race has increased annually from just eight college teams in 1994 to more than 80 at this year's event. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the use of the lunar roving vehicle on the surface of the moon. And the Marshall Space Flight Center team, along with Apollo astronauts Charlie Duke and Harrison Schmidt, helped celebrate the historic feat. To help commemorate the event, more than 300 great moon buggy racers mingled with the engineers who worked on the program in the 1960s, and whose ingenuity and determination helped to inspire this popular student competition. The opportunity to do those wonderful things uh, really came because uh, of some 450,000 Americans that uh, decided that this was the most important thing that they were going to do with their lives. And when young men and women, uh, like most of you, uh, believe that, uh, you can do anything. And I congratulate uh, all of you for already having taken steps that are going to make you something special. In just 17 months between 1969 and 1971, the NASA industry team finalized the lunar roving vehicle's design, built and tested it at the Marshall Space Flight Center and partner facilities, and sent it to the moon as a key element of the Apollo 15 mission. For three days, beginning July 31, 1971, astronauts David Scott and James Irwin guided the rover across the lunar surface, dramatically expanding NASA's exploration of the moon. 41 years ago this week, on April 11, 1970, Apollo 13 launched from the Kennedy Space Center on what was supposed to be NASA's third manned mission to the moon. However, Commander Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, and Fred Hayes had to abort the mission after a rupture of the service module's oxygen tank. Hey, Houston, we've had a problem here. Can say again, please. Oh, uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Since the crew was brought home safely, Apollo 13 is considered a successful failure and one of NASA's finest moments. And 30 years ago, on April 12, 1981, the liftoff of Columbia on STS-1 ushered in NASA's space shuttle era. Astronauts John Young and Bob Crippen made 37 orbits on the two-day mission that successfully tested all major systems of the new orbiter. Upon Columbia's safe return, it was discovered that 16 tiles from the orbiter's thermal protection system had been lost, with another 148 tiles damaged. 
The problem was solved by modifications to suppress sound waves caused by the shuttle's solid rocket boosters. This first flight of the space shuttle came 20 years to the day after Yuri Gagarin in 1961 became the first human to travel into space. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.